Starting out with bag mask ventilation, um, let's say we have a patient here who is actually asleep because they'll be sleeping when you bag mask them. Um, we want to bring the patient's face up to this mask and then apply firm pressure so that we don't have a leak or we have a good seal. And so to get that, we'll use our thumb and then our second or index finger to make this C shape on the top of the mask. You want to be able to center the pressure on this mask. So if you put too much pressure on the side here, you might get an air leak out of the side. But assuming you're able to equally distribute pressure over this mask, you should get a good seal, assuming that your mask is sized appropriately for the patient. With your third finger, you'll do a chin lift, so having that underneath their chin. And then importantly, this fifth finger is at the angle of the jaw, again, to get more control over the mandible. Um, this will, the chin lift and bringing the patient's face up should help you a little bit with obstruction. Because one way to solve a little bit of a tongue obstruction would be to do a chin lift. Um, of course, the better way to address that would be to use your OPA. So just insert this um, before you start to, um, to bag mask somebody. All right. Um, so our circuit for actually delivering air or oxygen to the patient will look something like this. We'll have a bag. And this is a valve which is adjustable pressure limiting valve. And so what this valve does is prevents pressure in this circuit from going above whatever you set it to. So let's set it to 20 centimeters of water. And now any pressure in this circuit that builds up beyond 20 centimeters will escape out. So the air will leave the circuit so that the pressure in the circuit does not exceed 20 centimeters of water. We have a fresh gas flow inlet of this circuit, and usually we'll set this to something like 15 liters per minute, which is the max of 100% O2. So we have a steady stream of oxygen re-entering this breathing circuit in case we lose our seal and we're losing air to somewhere else. So we want to be giving someone an FiO2 of uh, 1, which is 100% oxygen. So very simply, when we squeeze this bag, it'll collapse, and we'll send air down, in through the mask, and hopefully to the patient's lungs, which will inflate and we'll get our chest rise. What might actually also happen a little bit is air will go down through the lower esophageal sphincter and insufflate the stomach. Um, and the lower esophageal sphincter tone will give way at about 16 to 20 centimeters of water. So if you actually are bagging with this full 20 centimeters of water that this circuit will allow, you might actually be insufflating the stomach a little bit. So just be cautious of that. So let's go over what you're actually feeling for, for feedback that you're doing a good job with your bag mass ventilation and what you're actually looking for um, in terms of the patient and the monitors for feedback that you're doing things properly. So essentially, you're feeling for the compliance of the bag, and that's just the change of the volume with the pressure. So how hard do you have to squeeze this bag and to give what volumes? So if you have to squeeze the bag really hard, maybe you have an obstruction, um, or if the opposite happens, the bag collapses very easily. Maybe you have a leak, or maybe there's just, it's a very compliant um, airway path. And then you're feeling for air return to bag after. So it's after you let go of the bag, the air will come back out through the lungs, through the mask, and back into the bag. The bag will reinflate and you'll be able to feel that. Now what's actually happening at the same time is the fresh gas flow is continuously refilling this bag. So that will be happening, um, but there is a subtle difference between um, feeling the air return from the patient's lungs versus just your fresh gas flow back to the bag. If you were to just hold this mask on the patient's face with a good seal, not squeeze your bag at all, because of this fresh gas flow that you have, 
the bag would inflate actually and then the circuit pressure would start to approach 20 centimeters of water. So that means that that air pressure would also be transduced down to the patient's lungs and they will inflate as well. So if that happens, you just need to let some pressure off of your circuit so that you're actually able to um, give someone a breath above whatever the maximum pressure allowed in the circuit is. So we've gone over what you can feel. The first thing you'll see is chest rise. And this should be apparent. You give a squeeze of the bag and the air inflates the lungs and you'll see that. Another bit of feedback you get is from the monitors and lots of good information here. But essentially it's the same as what you're feeling just given to you in number form. So you're going to see the volume of expired air and also the airway pressure. So if you look and you see that your airway pressure is high, it's approaching um, the 20 centimeters of water allowed by your circuit by the APL valve, but you're not getting any expired air, you have to wonder where, where did that air go if, if it's not entering the patient and then leaving again. So let's talk about the issues you can have. And also you have, of course, end tidal CO2. Um, the end tidal CO2, of course, means that air went into the patient's lungs, participated in gas exchange, and then came back and was sampled by our sample line. So that's a good in indicator that indeed you were inflating the lungs and, you know, this air wasn't going completely into the stomach and then coming back out. Although I think that would be more uncommon. So issues you can have though would be number one, a leak. So if you squeeze this bag and there's no resistance, it just seems like the air leaves really easily. Consider the fact that you might have a leak. So is air escaping out the side of the mask? Or is there a disconnection somewhere else in your circuit? Maybe one of your tubes is disconnected or your um, CO2 absorber is disconnected. Or maybe you forgot to set the APL valve to 20. If the APL valve is set to zero, it's not going to let pressure in this circuit accumulate any more than about zero centimeters of water. So you'll squeeze the bag and this valve will not like that pressure accumulating and all this air will just escape here instead of being delivered to the patient. So make sure that you have set this to an appropriate number. And you'll actually have to turn this up because when you're having the patient breathe spontaneously before, it's more comfortable for them to breathe when there is no pressure in the circuit. So you'll actually have it on zero. So if you don't remember to change it to something like 20 when you go to give them positive pressure, then it might seem like there is a leak in your circuit. So that's issue number one. Issue number two would be an obstruction. And what you might notice here is that it feels like you have to squeeze this bag really hard, or you'll at least have to squeeze it up to the pressure of whatever the max um, allowed by the, your APL valve is. So you'll be squeezing this and you'll be generating pressures of 20 centimeters of water and then the bag will empty of course, but the air is actually again coming out of here. It's coming out of the APL valve into the scavenging system instead of being delivered to the patient. And that's because if there's an obstruction like the tongue is obstructing on the posterior pharynx, air will of course try to go here but it will not be able to pass so the circuit will see high pressure and then the extra air will escape. So in this case, in the case of an obstruction, the volume of expired air from the patient will be zero because no air is actually being delivered to the patient and the airway pressure will be high, it'll be 20. So you'll have no air coming back, you'll have no end tidal CO2, but you'll have high airway pressure and no chest rise. So that means that you're not effectively delivering air or oxygen to the patient and you need to readjust something. So locate your obstruction. 